COVID-19, also referred to by the umbrella term coronavirus, is a global pandemic that has affected the world in many ways. Like most industries, film has suffered due to this. Film and TV shoots had to be halted, film releases were delayed, and cinemas had to close their doors. In the film world, all news was bad news. Of course, the real tragedy is the heartbreakingly large number of lives lost and damaged by the virus, but this is primarily a film channel, so we're here to talk about the film side of things. People often claim that the greatest art comes from the greatest suffering. Based on this theory, we can expect a large number of films over the next couple of years to discuss and reflect on the pandemic. A few films have already been released referencing COVID-19, such as the simply titled Corona Zombies. This, however, is not art. Well over half a million people have died as a result of the coronavirus, and their first response is to make a comedy horror, exploiting it as if it's a hot topic. Instead, it was Toshiaki Toyoda, director of Blue Spring, who brought us the first genuine film commenting on the outbreak in the form of Hakai no Hi, known in the West as the Day of Destruction. Whilst the words coronavirus and COVID-19 aren't uttered once in the film itself, the film is a clear commentary on the effects the virus had on the world, especially Japan. 2016 saw the release of Shin Gojira, which saw the Godzilla monster act as a stand-in for the Fukushima disaster, allowing the film to comment on the political response to the events that occurred just a few years prior. The Day of Destruction takes a similar approach to this, with the film showcasing the way in which society in Japan handled and reacted to the coronavirus epidemic, without specifically making the film about COVID-19. The film was released on the 24th of July 2020, which is the date that the Tokyo Olympics were scheduled to take place had they not been delayed till the following year. The plot focuses on the spread of a flu-like virus that resulted in deaths and the delay of the Tokyo Olympics. The parallels between the real-life events and the film's plot are obvious. The film also takes a somewhat metaphorical approach in these aspects, which is especially prevalent in the film's opening a black and white sequence without requiring much dialogue to tell the story. The film manages to make its metaphor while simultaneously telling a story for more traditional audiences to follow clearly. Another positive aspect of the film is the casting. Each actor fits the role well and it's always nice to see Kiyohiku Shibakawa, an actor with tremendous screen presence as seen in Low Life Love, a film which I will forever recommend. At 57 minutes the film could be seen by some as a little on the short side but I have no quarrels with shorter films. Sure, films tend to be around an hour and a half, two hours, or maybe even longer, but feature length is frequently defined as either 40 or 45 minutes. Personally, I'd rather a film last a runtime appropriate for the story it tells, whether that's on the short side like this, or runs longer than your average film like the four-hour epic Love Exposure. An hour seemed like the perfect length to tell the story that this film focused on, lacking any filler and without scenes that drag. One potential fault is that this film could be too relevant. At this exact moment, this is the film we need, but in the future it's possible that it could lose its impact if we succeed in our hope to return to normality and put everything behind us. Only time will tell, but right now it's an interesting example of the right film made at the right time.